Yep. So just please step into the tea. Um, these are your headphones. Thank you. When you're ready, just press the spacebar to start playing. Go back to your tea and welcome to the window. Thank you. Thank you for having me. This is going back to when we first met, right? I hated the guy. You know, I'm looking at him, you know, he has that walk about him where his shoulders are up. This is a little guy, right? But he walks like he's bigger than two houses. So I'm like, yo, who is this guy? I should kick his butt, you know? And so we would go back and forth with this, you know, sort of like silly banter between him and I. Like we say we're like spies and operatives who are just like <laughs> locked up. But of course, when, you know, we're not prisoners, we're like spies within prison. We used to sit in class next to each other all the time, like just cracking jokes and talking about like, hey, you know, I mean, we should have really been listening. You can ask Professor Masa. <laughs> you'll, you'll be somewhere with him and he'll just, you know, suddenly come out with something really funny or something really wise. I would say he's very sincere. He works on whatever his passion is. His, his, his eyes were in the future when I met him. You know, I heard a lot about Khalil from people who he had met, um, obviously, prior in his life. He clearly meant a lot to a lot of people. He was an extraordinary student. Um, incredible student. The entire MSW class loved Khalil. Everybody knew him. Everybody networked with him. He had a conversation at least with every person of the program, and it was 90 of us. I mean, was it surprising to hear that he'd been incarcerated? Was that yes, surprising? absolutely. Absolutely, <laughs> because you usually like judge a person by, by its cover. I mean, it's the normal human thing that we all do. And if you look at Khalil, like, he does not represent that at all, because he carries himself in such an admirable way. He had an extraordinary GPA. It must have been close to a 4.0. You yeah, know, I'm proud of this guy. Huh? Even though he was a knucklehead, but you know, I'm proud of him. <laughs> Maybe 10 days before graduation, his wife calls me up about 6.30 in the morning, and she's hysterical. And she said that the INS had come to their house um, about 5.30 in the morning, um, asked for Khalil and arrested him on the spot. I remember being in my office and getting this phone call that he'd been picked up by immigration. But that sense that, that that could happen to him, you know, his family was being ripped apart, they'd come in while his kids were there, I mean, it was just an awful story. I mean, he was in a detention center for immigration, it wasn't, you know, he was essentially back in prison. Yeah, that, that, was, that was a tough time, thinking what the results can be. We were actually really worried, yeah. What were you worried about? Uh, we were worried that he was going to get deported. You know, he reached out to me and, you know, the only one thing that he told me, you know, Anthony, I need you to take care of my mom. He is a very devoted son. I mean, he's very good to his mother. He, he's kind of, you know, the, the pride and joy of his mother's life. Every time I visited her, I saw her in a worse, in a worse condition emotionally. Uh, my concern was that if he would have been deported, his mother will probably have another heart attack or something. I shouldn't be saying this because I don't want him to hear it, but um, <laughs> she beat herself up a lot. You know, she talked about it. She, you know, for weeks we would carry on the conversation and she was pissed off. Anthony, I should have done this. You know, that's things that he wouldn't know and I'm hoping he doesn't see this, but um, she was pretty bummed about it. How he felt? A hundred times worse than I felt because he was concerned about his family. His kids and his wife and mom, that's what he was concerned about. He was not so concerned about himself. 
I remember going to see him. He, you know, he looked at me, he told me, he was like, you know, and like, throughout my whole, you know, being incarcerated, I never felt helpless. Now that I'm facing this immigration debacle, it was more like my whole family, my wife and my two daughters. I'm helpless. The daughter, older daughter, when Khalil was taken away, just was waiting for him to come home. And she actually slept on his laundry bag, um, just waiting. Uh, and that's the closest she could be to him. I was scared for him, knowing that he was go possibility being that he was going to be going back to where he don't know anyone, don't know anywhere, because he came as a baby. It was, it was surreal, it was very scary. People kind of panicked because they felt this urge to do something, but they didn't know what they could do. Um, there was many more questions than there were answers. There's never really a lot of good news to give somebody when they're subject to mandatory detention and deportation. Mm. I can't reassure him when he's gonna be released. I don't even know if he's gonna be released and where to, right? I don't know, it was like you win in the lottery and all of a sudden, like, you had this whole party, you know, now you're thinking about millions of dollars, how many Lamborghinis you're going to drive, and they told you, oh, but by the way, you have the wrong ticket. That feeling. Hmm. And so, look, like, why then? You know, they have a quota, right? And so they're looking for a certain kind of person, and Khalil's conviction puts him into the top priority category. The only option for Khalil at this time is to ask a request for the government for their, to use their discretion to release him. Someone suggested a letter writing campaign. We all wrote letters. We all wrote letters. All of the students, all of the student body, everybody moved. Everybody was asking each other, do you write that letter? Do you do this? Do you do that? And it was really amazing. We all got the letters in. And there ended up being several hundred letters, several hundred individual letters, talking about his character, uh, talking about the strength, talking about his families talking about his um, commitment to the community, his commitment to social justice. Eventually, we found out that the reason the judge released him had to do with the quantity and the quality of the letters. And then, at the end of 2014, he was issued one of only two pardons that Governor Cuomo issued. So when he called me, I was a little I'm like, okay, you know, what's going on? Like, you know, it's over. That was the words, you know, those were the words, it's over. It was a, it was a surreal moment, but we, you know, it's a beautiful, it was a beautiful day. That was joy. That was happiness. We went down the weekend after he got out, we went down that weekend to see him. Tears came to his eyes of joy, happiness. It just brought me to tears to see, you know, all the work that he had done to really transform his life. And there he was on the street. And it was like this sort of magical moment. I've always been proud of him because all the things that he has over, overcame throughout life, those are old things to be proud of. I used to tell him all the time that he, I can see him as a professor. He should be a professor. He should be teaching the classes because the way that he expresses himself and that he thinks and that he delivers his ideas are like amazing. And he's a lecturer at Columbia now. I look for people who, are, who can make a difference. He definitely is one of them. He, sometimes he doesn't feel that he's affecting a lot of people um, and that's something that I sort of tell him like like he's affecting tons of people oh my gosh it's like I feel like a part of my heart he is a part of my heart because um, Khalil I just want you to know how much we and I in particular appreciate the commitment that you have for life. You will live in my memory for forever because that commitment 
and the, the, the hardships that you were able to overcome. You're an amazing human being, an amazing creature, as I said, and you've helped me so many ways that you won't even think. The path that you've chosen, just continue that. And it only comes to, it only comes natural to people that believe in it and people that are that, which is you. I just want to tell you how much I appreciate who you are, who you've become, and that you always find a place for me in your life. And I thank you for that, and I love you, Khalil. Man, you have shown me so much. You have taught me the negative thoughts that I had about people being incarcerated, how they can come out in a positive sense. And we all love you, right? Sorry, we're not there as much as we should be, but I am very proud and love you. Khalil, I am, I'm, words can't express how proud I am of you. You're one of the finest men I know. The day on the phone when you asked if you could call me Pop was incredibly moving to me. And I love you very much. I'm very, very proud of you. And I know the best for you is still yet to come. <laughs>